In this video, I will compare Next.js with Encore and I will show you how they differ, but also how they complement each other. If you have a Next.js app and want to expand the backend functionality of that app, then this video is for you. Using Next.js together with Encore is an awesome combination. And later in the video, I will add Encore TS to an existing Next.js project and show you how they fit together. I think most of you already know about Next.js, but Encore is an open source framework that aims to make it easier to build robust and type safe backends. The framework is available for both TypeScript and Go, and it has a lot of built in features to make the development experience smoother when building everything from small to large scale backends. But in this video, I will focus on Encore TS, which is the TypeScript version. Like Next.js, Encore is completely open source. So read the code on GitHub, fork it or contribute to it. And when building an application, you can host it wherever you want that takes Docker images. And you do so without any hidden costs or looming quotas. And performance wise, Encore is extremely fast compared to other Node.js and Bun frameworks, including Next.js. And in this benchmark, we have measured requests per second on a public API endpoint. And the reason why Encore is so fast is because it uses Rust under the hood. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I've left some links under the video. So we have the traditional separation between backend and frontend. And the backend part is bigger just because that's the part that we're interested in right now. And backend here is also a spectrum going from feature rich to lightweight. And I know, I know, it's a bit two dimensional, but keep with me. On this scale, I would position next like this. So the front end aspects are all covered. You're able to do everything from static site rendering to server side components. And you can even build a single page application inside next if you want to. But next is primarily a front end framework and the back end functionality it offers is there to make the front end aspects better. Next is amazing. And for a lot of use cases, it, it will be everything you need. And I've used Next for years and I continue to be impressed by it. But the backend aspects of Next are limited. And there are things that you just can't do and some things that you probably shouldn't do even if you can. I'm thinking of things like having multiple front ends like a web page and a mobile app, but with a single backend, or if you want to offer a public API to your consumers. The single threaded aspect of Node.js can also become a bottleneck. And next, it's not great if you want to have long running jobs with background processing. And connected to that last point, APIs you're building with Next.js will be stateless. And this is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can become a limitation depending on the type of application you are building. And with stateless applications, your API handlers are running inside Lambda functions and they will die when the response has been sent. So you're not really able to respond to the user and then continue to process data in the background. But again, this doesn't mean that the stateless serverless model is bad, but it is a limitation with Next that you're forced into a certain route. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, then please leave a like. It will help to get the video in front of more people. Encore, on the other hand, is purely a backend framework and it's built from the ground up to be scalable, no matter how big your application becomes or how large your team is. Encore makes it extremely easy to set up infrastructure locally, so you will always be able to start your whole application by running Encore Run in your terminal, no matter the size of your application. You're able to divide the application into multiple services, which can be scaled separately. You can create event-driven systems where your services communicate through PubSub in a type-safe way. And as I mentioned earlier, Encore TS has a Rust runtime. So you get the developer experience of writing TypeScript and using all the NPM libraries that you're used to, but the performance boost of Encore's multi-threaded runtime. You can have long running tasks or cron jobs running in the background and inspect API calls using tracing, which comes built in and even works in your local environment. So why not use Next together with Encore? Well, you should. And with Encore, you're able to generate a type safe request client that can be used within your Next.js app. And I will show you how this works, but you can think of it sort of like a TRPC client if you're familiar with that. Well, we love using Next.js together with Encore and Encore.dev is an example of that. 
Here we're using static site generation for generating our documentation to keep it snappy and fast. But we keep the backend layer of the Next.js app really thin and fetch the markdown files from an Encore app when generating the static props. And that way we can leave the heavier things like generating documentation search indexes, for example, in the Encore app. But now let's look at how you can move some API routes from a Next.js app over to an Encore TS backend. Okay, welcome to my editor. Here we have a small Next.js 15 app that is using the app router. And in the API folder, we have a users folder that has one API route. And this is just a list of hard-coded users that we're gonna fetch and display on our front end. Moving over to the page file, and here we have an async component that is fetching data from our users API route. We convert the data to JSON and cast the type because we're not using TRPC or Encore just yet. And down here, we're looping through each user displaying their names. And if you move over to the browser, we can see it in action. Pretty straightforward. So let's add Encore to this project. And we could, of course, create two separate repos, but I'm going to add Encore to our existing project. On the left here, I have the next app running, but in the root of our project, I'm going to run Encore app init to create a new app. We will be asked if we're gonna use Go or TypeScript, and then we can give our app a name. And because I'm logged into Encore Cloud, I automatically get a cloud dashboard URL, but that is totally optional. In the editor, we can now see that we have an Encore.app file in our repo, which includes our ID and some other things. And we will not need to touch this file right now, but it's needed to run our Encore backend. Let's go back to the terminal and install the Encore.dev npm library. Great. One last thing that Encore needs is a small addition to our tsconfig.json file. And we need to update the paths to include the tilde Encore imports. And this is needed for Encore to be able to import local files that will be generated by Encore. Let's create an API folder in the root of our repo. And in here, we will place our new Encore backend code. Okay, I've added some code in here, so let's go through it together. In the users folder, I've added the encore.service.ts file, and this file is needed for Encore to recognize the users folder as a service in our system. You can split your system up into multiple services or have everything in one. That is up to you. I went ahead and added a database to our backend so that we don't need to have hard-coded users anymore. All you need to do to create a database with Encore is to instantiate a new SQL database, give it a name and a config. Encore has built-in support for ORMs like Prisma and Drizzle, and I've picked Drizzle in this case. We get a connection string back that we can feed into Drizzle, and that is it. We are now ready to start using our database. In the controllers.ts file is where we have our API endpoints. And you create a new endpoint by calling the API function, passing in a config object and a handler. In the config object, we can specify the path method and some other things like auth if we want to. This endpoint will return a user list response and the request and response types are ordinary TypeScript types. Encore will automatically validate the requests at runtime using these types. And we get the users from the database and return the results. And in the case of an error, we return an API error object. I've also added two more endpoints for creating and deleting users. And both of these endpoints take payload data that we can define inline like this. Okay, I think we're ready to start our Encore backend. So let's go back to the terminal and run Encore run. You can see that everything starts up and the database is created. And a call out here, you will need to have Docker desktop running because Encore creates databases using Docker when running your application locally. And when the app is running, we also get access to the local development dashboard, which is a tool to help you during development. So let's take a look at that now. And in the development dashboard, we are able to call our APIs, sort of like Postman, but we can also get access to other tools like automatically generated API documentation in the service catalog. 
But let's use the API Explorer to call our APIs. And if we try to list the users right now, you can see that we get back an empty list. But let's fix that by calling the create endpoint a few times. Calling list now will get back our three users. Awesome. Let's create a request client that I mentioned earlier. And we do that by running Encore Gen client, giving it an output folder and an environment. And just like that, the client has been generated. But let's start our next server again. In our project, we can now see the request client. And you should not need to make manual edits to this file. But whenever you make a change to your Encore backend, you can generate a new client to keep your frontend in sync. And in here, you can see that we have our user service and our three endpoints. Final step is to make use of this client to call our backend. And we're going to do that in the home component. We instantiate the client and give it a URL to our backend. I'm using the helper variable local that we get from the client. We can remove the code that we had before and instead call the client variable. Our list endpoint does not take any input, so no need to pass any arguments here. Let's rename it to users. And the users variable is now type safe so that we can rely on autocomplete in our editor. And I think that's it. Let's move over to the browser. And if we now reload the page, we get the users from our database. That's it. Thank you for watching. Give the Encore project a star on GitHub to follow along with the updates. It will also help us out. And if you have any questions, post them below or join the Encore community on Discord. See you.